Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I want to welcome you back to another edition of your Adrenal Fix. Today I want to talk to you about the two best tests that you can do to assess your adrenal fatigue, your adrenal function. Um, if you're exhausted, you crash in the middle of the day, you don't get up with a lot of energy, you get shaky, lightheaded, and jittery, you have a lot of brain fog, you feel wired and tired, maybe you have a lot of um, pain or just maybe you're just anxious you don't handle stress very well these are all signs of an adrenal problem and if uh, you're suffering with an adrenal problem then the most important thing is to get an accurate test or an accurate baseline on how well your adrenals are doing so that you can start to put together a program so that you can implement it you can improve your adrenal health and then remeasure to objectively see that you've had improvement so one of the first things that I wanted to talk to you about is your saliva sample and we used to do a lot of saliva samples in the office until the big boy came along that's called the Dutch test which we'll talk about in a second but saliva samples are still very very good and I still consult with a lot of patients that have done saliva samples so let's talk about the benefits first the benefits of a saliva sample is it measures the free fraction of the hormone and what that means in English is that it measures the part of the hormone that isn't bound to a protein and when we see the free fraction of the hormone, we're able to see how much of it has been is available for use. And so what we do is we take spit samples, which is very sexy and attractive, and you do it at four times during the day versus uh, a morning cortisol blood test, which only measures it at one time of the day. And the reason we want to see it at different times of the day is because our hormone release or our cortisol release is based on the circadian rhythm, which means in the morning you should have really high healthy cortisol output you should bound out out of bed with a lot of energy and it should steadily fall throughout the entire day so that when the time the nighttime comes it's nice and low you fall asleep as soon as you hit the pillow and then you wake up the next day all ready to go and to do that again that's a nice rhythm where it would be high in the morning and low in the evening high in the morning low in the evening and so what we like to do is with cortisol saliva samples we measure different times of the day and based on those um, responses we can see different outputs a lot of the times I'll see patients that have no response throughout the entire day or a lot of times I'll see they have a dysregulated response where it's high and then low and then high or sometimes I'll see it's high throughout the entire day and so depending on your response will depend on what type of problems you're dealing with. Is it an acute based problem? Is it a maladaptive problem? Is it a chronic problem? And how can we help you best on what is going on and relate that to your symptoms? Another great thing it tells us to do or looks at is your cortisol to DHEA ratio which should be somewhere in the 5 to 1 ratio. If it's above or below that, then we know there are certain physiological breakdowns that are occurring in the body. We can put together a protocol, address your blood sugar, uh, if there's any anemias, fix the gut, help the immune system, look at heavy metal toxicities, see how well you're methylating from a DNA, nutrigenomic point of view. So many things we can do, which is a good test. But then along came the Dutch test. And the Dutch test is now my favorite test that I'm working with all my patients now. It's called a dried urinary total cortisol hormone test. And basically it's not a 24-hour urine hormone where you pee into a big, um, a big box or a big bucket for 24 hours and then they average and shake it up and average your, your, your amount of cortisol. This is done at certain times of the day as well. So it's done first thing in the morning when you wake up. Actually, it's done at night time when you have your dinner and what I really like about this is you may have your dinner a little bit different time than I have my dinner you may be on a third watch and I may not be so that's what's really good then it's done right before you go to bed again your bedtime may be different than my bedtime then it's done first thing in the morning your bed your waking time may be different than my time and then it's done two hours after that so we get a little bit of a different curve going on here but we can still check the impact of your circadian rhythm and whether or not there's a nice initial oomph in the morning which is should be your cortisol awakening response where your cortisol levels double within the first half hour or at least they they, they rise very very nicely um, the great thing about the total cortisol hormone test is 
we can look at your sex hormones also. Unfortunately, this doesn't do it unless you specifically do it as an add-on. This one is it's included. So we're looking at your estrogen levels, progesterone levels. There's eight different metabolites for estrogen. And depending on how well your phase one and phase two estrogen metabolism is going, basically how well your liver is working, how well um, you're breaking down these inflammatory hormones so that you're clearing them from the body. If you're not breaking them down very efficiently or you're going down a more inflammatory route, then that's going to be a different protocol nutritionally and lifestyle wise than someone who is doing that so it gives us a lot more information it also tells us about progesterone and testosterone um, how androgenic you are if you're going down a more 5 alpha inflammatory breakdown of testosterone then we wouldn't necessarily want to give you DHEA whereas in this test we may not notice that you're going through a 5 alpha breakdown and giving you DHEA would be the wrong thing to do um, the other great thing about this is it looks at not only free fraction of the hormone. So let's say we see this test and it tells us that your free fraction of the hormone looks fine. However, we don't know about how much you're metabolized or how much hormone you actually used up. Because free fraction of the hormone only represents 1 to 3% of the total and metabolized hormone is 100%, then if you're low on your free fraction, and we're concluding that you're actually low on your metabolized based on only one to three percent of the total sample, we can go very, very wrong. And I see that happen a lot. I see patients that have a lot of inflammation, they're using up a lot of metabolized cortisol or cortisol that's being used up. They're producing enough to get them through the day, but there's just so much inflammation in the body that it's being used up right away. So it's a different strategy than just looking at the saliva sample and seeing that the free fraction is really, really low. If the metabolized cortisol is really high, I don't think I'm going to be wanting to give you more stimulants to make more metab make more cortisol. That's just going to put more fuel on the fire, so to speak, and continue to break down your body. We're going to want to actually do a strategy to help you reduce inflammation. So that's what's really good about the Dutch test. Also, the Dutch test tells us about methylation. That's phase two metabolism, and that has to do with our genetics. So if we have genetic weak links, our enzymes are altered in their efficiency, and we're on an estrogen replacement program, and, and your, your comp T um, enzyme's not working very well, then you're gonna have a very, very slow down uh, breakdown of hormones, and we'll see this on this test. And then lastly, it compares cortisone, which is the used up or un inactive, actually the inactive form of cortisol, and it will tell us what the ratio is to each other so that we can make nutritional recommendations based on that. So at the end of the day, the Dutch test is a really, really awesome test that gives us much more information than the saliva sample, and we're doing this with all our patients now. We also find that the only test that's really, really valid is the second test, meaning if you don't do a first test and then a second test, then there's no way to tell how much you're improving based on your on your samples. And I mean, it's great that you're feeling better, but I really like and encourage my clients and my patients that we work with to retest to see where you're at. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this version of your adrenal fix. Um, we were talking about the two best ways to measure your adrenal responses, saliva and the total Dutch test, which is an awesome test. Um, if you like what you heard, please give me a share, a like, a comment. Make sure you join my YouTube channel so that you can get updates. And then also visit me on my Facebook page, AdrenalFatigueSociety.com, or the same uh, URL for my blog. Hope you enjoyed this version. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen, and I look forward to helping you recover with your adrenal nightmare. Thank you so much.